Hi everyone, it's just uh, Tom Lee here from cybergamer.com.au. Uh, I've got another video review for you guys here. Now what we have is our friends at uh, AC Ryan have sent across the Play On HD2 uh, media player. Now, uh, first of all, thanks to Bluetooth IT, who's the AC Ryan distributor for Australia. They actually sent the unit down for us. Um, so we're going to do a bit of a review. There's going to be a couple of different elements to the review where they've also sent down a little wireless, USB wireless adapter. So we're going to run through how to set that up. We're just going to have a look at the unit itself, what it does, what you can, you know, the little tricks you can do with it. And also, I'm just going to do a little bit of an operating guide, which will include some things like, you know, popping a hard drive into the unit, formatting it and getting it ready to go. Um, so it's going to be quite a sizable one, so it's going to take a, a while to run through all the features that this unit has. So to start with, what we'll do is we'll just um, we'll just flick over to an overview of the bits and pieces that you get with the unit as well, and we'll just describe you know what what they are and you know what you're meant to be doing with them. So we we'll flick off and we'll switch on to the next few, which is the rundown of the parts that come in the box. Okay, guys, so we're back here uh, with our AC Ryan Play On HD2 review. Now, first of all. Um, our unit comes with the USB cable, which you'll see is our blue cable here. Now you also get a composite video cable, which is your, uh, your red, green and blue cable, which is obviously for composite video. Now you get your standard, um, uh, your standard video cables as well, which is just your yellow video and your red and white audio, left and right audio. Now obviously you get the quick install guide. Now being male, of course, I'm not going to use this because, you know, males know everything. And as well as that, we get our AC Ryan remote controller, which is actually really laid out quite well. And the good thing about the controller is they actually have um, on-screen guides as well, which will tell you, you know, what button you have to press to progress through the different stages of the menu. Uh, the next one is this little beastie here, which is dropped, but it's a USB stick. And that's a wireless N uh, USB adapter for high-speed wireless, which is really quite handy if you have that you know, tucked up behind your TV. Um, and obviously, you know, you can connect it via standard Ethernet um, network as well. Now I've got a HDMI cable. Uh, I always recommend using HDMI cables because it's a HD unit. If you've got a HD TV, it'll transmit the video and the audio to your TV. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just a better way of operating the unit. Now you've also got your AC adapter, pretty obvious there. Now what we'll do is we'll have a look at the unit itself. <laughs> Sorry about the free cam here, guys. It'll sort of be a little bit easier to show you the things as we go through, you know, in free cam here. Um, this is the unit itself. I actually really like the design. I saw a couple of different reviews, which I thought were a little bit, well, a little bit stupid, to be honest, as they didn't really think much of the design. And when it comes down to it, I, I like this design because it's got rounded edges. Like most units that you have underneath your TV, they're just square boxes, usually a dull black color, um, when your TV is usually uh, glossy, uh, plastic frame, but it's got nice rounded edges, a simple button on the front that's um, obviously it'll be red when it's on standby and a light blue or pretty much white colour once it's on um, and it's got a gloss finish as well so it, it matches up really nicely with the stuff that you already have underneath your TV um, and it, like I said it adds that rounded rounded touches which kind of you know doesn't make it look as boring as some of your, you know, your DVD players which are just you know basically square boxes now obviously on the front you've got your power button. We'll spin it around to the side here. Now we've got a, um, a card reader slot on the side, but you've also got two USB host ports and you've got a USB connector. So obviously the, the bigger USB connector, you'll see it quite clearly right there. Uh, the bigger USB connector, that's for you to plug it into your computer so you can actually use it like a, a USB stick. It's obviously, you know, it's there so you can quite easily copy files back and forwards onto the unit from your computer. Now on the back you've got your standard video connectors which is your red, white and yellow. Um, you've got your composite connectors there, you've got your HDMI connector right beside it. Now you've got your Ethernet LAN cable, uh, connector I should say, and you've got optical which is your fiber optic audio connector and coaxial uh, digital audio connector and obviously where you plug in your power point, or your power pack and there's a fan on the back obviously because with the hard drive inside she'll, she'll warm up a bit. Now on the side We've got nice, easy access um, hard drive port. Now, all you have to do is, I might have to pop the camera down, because you've got to do two clips at once. So we'll just sit our camera, camera down here. So we pop these little toggles at the top, and we just um, flick that slide door down. And there you go. You just slide your hard drive in there. It's a guided um, 
plastic stubs on each side so the hard drive it'll it'll just slot in there nicely it'll click in firmly at the back and if you have a look at the side door piece here um, it actually has a rubber pad there in the middle so once you sit these hinges in place onto their grooves here like so and as you clip it shut that rubber pad will push against the hard drive ensuring a nice a nice snug fit okay so that's a, a unit itself so we turn that back around now obviously we'll do a bit of a cutscene here again um, yeah, we'll do a little bit of a cutscene and I'll just get it all connected up, ready to go. And then, yeah, we'll start going through some of the features. We might start it off with, um, we'll connect up a USB wireless adapter and I'll just run you through, you know, where you go to, you know, enable that, where you go to connect to a wireless network. Um, it's nice and easy. And then we'll also, we'll put a hard drive in there and format, format the hard drive. Um, and once we've got that underway, you know, we'll have the, the, the bulk of the unit set up ready to go so then we can you know just flick through some of the features that the unit has while you're in there so we'll cut again and we'll get our usb stick and that ready to go and then we'll come back on and we'll show you how to install them and set them up properly okay guys so we're back again um, we've got a ac run unit here it's connected via the ac adapter which you'll see in my hand there uh, we've connected via the HDMI cable, which is obviously if you've got a HD TV and the unit itself is HD There's not not much sense in running it on anything other than HDMI because obviously you get the better um, Audio and picture quality and like I said, it'll transmit the audio through to your TV So you don't need extra cables now What we'll do is as you can see the unit there the little red lights on just on the front That means you're sitting there in standby mode now we'll see on the side the little USB wireless and adapter poking out the side, so that's all plugged in ready to go. There's no specific port to plug it into, any port will do, so just plug it into one of the USB ports on the side. Now what we'll do is we'll flip those side cases open. We've just, I've just grabbed an everyday hard disk here, so we'll pop an everyday SATA hard disk in. Now we'll put it in with the connectors facing inwards and the sticker on the top side, so obviously that's the way it's got to go in. So you push it in, it'll click in nice and firmly at the back, we'll put the hinges back on, Click, click, and it's in, ready to go. Okay, so we'll turn the unit on now. And this will just kind of uh, demonstrate to you, you know, just the unit starting up. Now, the unit will actually tell you that you've got your wireless adapter plugged in once you've got it in there. And it'll also tell you that the hard drive needs to be formatted. Obviously, if you've got a formatted hard drive, um, or one that you want to format, you can format it through the menu, so I can, you know, run you through that. I'll just uh, tilt the unit towards me a little bit just so we get the good angle for our remote control here. So here's our little unit starting up. Okay, so here we are on the main menu. As you can see up the top of the screen there, it's just gone Wi-Fi plug-in, which is just telling us that yes, you've got your um, Wi-Fi adapter plugged into the unit. Now, the, the menu is pretty straightforward. You've got movies for the movies. Oh, okay, we'll skip that for a minute. It's just come up saying, okay, you need to format your hard drive before you can use it. Do you want to format it? Yes, we do, we've just put a new hard drive in there, and that's my phone. Um, so we're just gonna click OK, and select Format, and what it's gonna do is gonna format our hard drive up for us, um, so it's ready to use in the unit itself. So what we'll do is, while the actual drive's formatting, we'll just click off for a minute, we'll let it format up ready to go, um, and then once it's finished its format, we'll, yeah, we'll come back and we'll start running through uh, just how to get to the format um, option if you want to format a drive that's already in there that's already been formatted um, We'll also just you know step you through the wireless setup and also the network setup too for an Ethernet cable Because you can have it on DHCP which is where your little modem hands it its settings or you can you know you can have it on automatic uh, Sorry manual settings where you can you know key in your IP address your gateway and your DNS servers so on and so forth now obviously this unit here um, it can browse Flickr photo galleries, Twitter, Facebook. It can also do YouTube videos online. Um, so yeah, so it, it's it's a good little unit here. And you know, obviously, um, wireless isn't too bad. But if you want to do YouTube, I really do think that um, you know, cabled is better if possible because you know you get a bit more speed out of it. Okay, so that, that format's actually complete. So it zips through that, no trouble at all. Now it's going to say, okay, let us reboot. So that part was nice and easy. We don't have to do a cutscene, which saves us a bit of time here. So what I might do is while that's starting up, I'll just get rid of my phone here. <coughs> oh. 
Okay, so you know, just be starting up again. It's got a hard drive in there ready to go now. Now the wireless, I have actually pre-configured it because obviously one of the things I didn't want to do is um, share with you all, you know, apart from my fantastic review here, um, share with you my wireless password, but I will show you how to get in there and set that up. Okay, so what we're gonna do, so I'm gonna go down the menu to settings, or set up settings, same thing. Okay, so we go to set up. And when that flicks across to the, the setup menu, obviously you've got a lot of different settings here. Um, we can set a device name, encoding, fonts. You can change your desktop. You can set your own desktop wallpapers. You can set your own screensavers. We're not really going to do anything like that. That's pretty fiddly stuff. It's not really the core of, you know, what this unit does. So these are things that are easily learnt, you know, yourself just by going through the install guide. So we'll skip some of those just to save it a little bit of time here. Um, now, as you see, down the bottom of the menu there, just right here will indicate it's remote control. It shows you how to switch categories. So we'll use the um, chapter forward and backwards button. So we'll use the chapter forward button. So we don't want audio. Obviously you can change your audio modes as well, um, depending on what TV or um, whether you're using HDMI or your optical uh, digital audio out. Video settings as well. Um, you can set your TV, obviously We've got ours on 16 by 9 because that's the format of this TV. Uh, 1080p 60 hertz because that's also the uh, format of this TV. Uh, digital noise reduction, I'll leave all that off. That's actually default. I haven't set any of those. Um, they're all default, so I'll just leave, you know, leave that as is now. But obviously, you know, you can customize those to suit your TV. Um, look, it's interesting to note too, um, I'm doing this review here on a 32 inch Kogan LED HD TV. Um, it's, it's a really good one, especially for you guys who have an Xbox, who want to use it, you know, in your bedroom or so on and so forth, somewhere where there isn't a lot of room. Um, this TV, brand new, it's say 1080p HD LED TV. Um, it was only $450. It's a Kogan TV. Obviously, you might have seen them on Today Tonight, the Australian brand who's, you know, really getting out there. So um, I picked one of these up just to see what it's like. And the beauty of it is I've um, had it connected to my computer at 1920 by 1080. So it's actually a really good little unit. So... Um, here's, that's just a bit of an insight into the, you know, some of the gear that we use uh, for these reviews. Okay, so we'll leave our video settings alone. Now we'll go chapter four again to jump down to the network settings. Okay, so here's our wide LAN setup. Now we don't have the ethernet cable plugged in, um, so obviously there's nothing there. But when you plug that um, ethernet cable in, it'll actually show you the IP address up the top. That's when you know when you're ready to go, because your IP address will show up there. It means it's gone off to your your modem or whatever, whatever's handing out the settings for your network. Um, we'll say, okay, give me some settings. And once it's got those successfully, you know, you'll see it'll come up at the top. You'll see on the wireless setup there, we've got an IP address, because like I said, I've pre-configured this, because I, you know, I really don't want to share my password with you. Um, so we're going to the wireless setup. Now, this is the wireless network we're connected to. Um, obviously, it's, it's lit up there, because it's already connected. Um, but yeah, you can obviously, it'll detect other networks. And once you select them, it'll come up saying, okay, well, what's your password? Um, and see, what we'll do is um, once you put in your password, this is what it'll come up with. It'll run a little test and it'll tell you, um, you know, it'll tell you all the details like your IP address, what type of network it is, what the gateway is. Yeah, so as you can see, our connection test is okay. Um, we've just basically skipped the part where we keep the password in. Uh, but that's what you'll get once you've connected your wireless. So we'll just, on the remote control there, let's make sure you can see that on the remote control. Uh, just beside this round part, there's a return button. This is obviously your, your key. This is your, your back button. There's your home to go back to the home menu. There's the menu button itself to jump into the menu. And there's your setup menu, which will take you straight into settings, which is nice and easy. So we've got our, our Wi-Fi set up. That's all done. Now, what we'll do, is here we are. Now the, oh, oh, sorry, I've jumped out the menu. Um, what we did, wanted to do there, we've got the auto detect the hard drive turned on, so we'll jump back down to MISC. Too far. Okay, so we've got the um, format hard drive prompt turned on. That's actually really handy to have, uh, because obviously when you want to, you know, put in a new hard drive, it'll automatically come up and say, okay, you, you've got a, um, a hard drive plugged in there. Um, 
yeah, do you want to format it? And obviously that, that's really handy to have. Now, there's other things like folder access protection, where you can set passwords on folders, um, and also a password for the unit itself. So we don't really need to go through any of those. They're just uh, you know, the more integrated functions of the unit that you know, that's personal preference, what one of those you want to set. Um, so that's basically, that's how we set up our wireless. So we'll jump back out of the menu here. Now, the next one, our wireless is set up, so what we might do is we'll actually jump out and then what I'll, do, I'll start doing is I'll start running you through some of the features here um, so you can actually see what this unit does. So it'll take a little bit of prep time, so I'll put a few movies on there, I'll put a couple of songs on there, I'll put a few photos on there and then we'll run through you know, how to access them, how to put them on, so on and so forth. So we'll cut again there. So we've gone through where the network setup is, we've gone through where the wireless setup is, um, we've gone through to enable the hard drive format option um, so obviously one, once you plug a new hard drive in there and it's ready to go it'll come up prompting you to format it so so we'll cut out for now and then we'll jump through and start running through some of the some of the features of the unit itself okay so we're back again um, our hard drives in we've got that all uh, prepped and ready to go now what I did is during the cutscene I've just put some sample some sample stuff on there. I've taken the sample music from Windows. I've taken just a little uh, Cybergamer logo video and popped that on there and a couple of images as well uh, just so we can run you through what this little device can do. Um, now one of the things I will show you as well is there's actually a firmware update for this device and it's actually really really I think it'd be a really really good part to have in this video is how to do a firmware upgrade. It's really straightforward so um, I'm actually downloading that at the moment, so we'll let that download while we're running through this here. Now, so we've added some sample data on here. Now, connecting the device to your computer or laptop to copy files on there, that's easy. We'll probably leave that bit out because, you know, I think everyone nowadays has a USB stick or a thumb drive or um, a USB hard drive, so I don't think that's going to be, you know, too challenging for anyone really to, to be able to do that. But what I will do is we'll jump into the um, setup menu again. Now we'll set this unit up so you can copy files onto it over the network, which is a little bit, um, it's a little bit more involved. So I think there'd be good value in actually, you know, just doing a bit of a how-to on how to do this, because that's how I put that sample data on there. Now, um, what we might show you, so we'll jump down to network. Now what we want to turn on here is, Samba. Now you can use FTP as well. You can see I've got FTP turned on. So for those of you who use FTP to upload and download files to websites, obviously, you know, this is an easy way for you to um, copy files onto the device as well. I'll just jump in the settings to show you what's involved there. Now obviously I've just put a username in of AAA and a password of 123 and I've turned FTP on. So that means that you can use any FTP client to connect to the device. You just use the IP address, which you'll see in your either wired or wireless LAN setup. So you use that IP address to connect the username AAA and the password 123, and that will take you into the hard drive of the device and you can use an FTP client to upload files to it. But we're gonna use um, file sharing over a network. Now, what that's called is this device has Samba on it, and Samba is the file sharing protocol, and that will allow you to connect to the device over the network and drop files straight onto the hard drive. Now, we've turned Samba on. Um, so we don't need to change that it's only on and off. There's no extra settings involved. So all we want to do is turn that on and that'll make this device visible on the network. Now you see the host name is Play on HD. So that's what we're going to look like, uh, sorry, look like, uh, look for on the network when we go to connect. We're looking for the network device Play on HD. And then once you connect through there, you'll see the share called HDD1 or hard drive one. And that'll allow us to drop files straight onto the unit ready to, you know, to play or use. Now, I'll take you over to my workstation just to actually show you um, how to get onto the device. So that, that'll be part of this as well. But before we do that, what I'll do is on my workstation, I actually created a share. So I'll just click on home here. So I created a shared folder on my workstation. Now, the setup for me is probably a little bit more complicated because my workstation is part of a, an office network domain. So that's a bit more complicated than your normal home setup but I'll just show you how easy it is to grab files off of another machine. Now you can use this for your media center computer or you know whatever else you want to use, whether it be your computer in your bedroom, 
So we're going to go to Files Manager here. Now we're going to go to the network. Okay, so my computer is part of the SHB domain, so you'll see the SHB group there. So you'll see my workstation here. Now, because my workstation requires a username and password to connect to the share, um, I've already done that. So if you haven't done that and you do have that set up on your computer at home, when you go to connect to your computer, it'll pop up saying, what's your username and password? Now that username and password is the username and password that you use when you first turn your computer on. Um, so you've just got to key that in. See, I've done that for mine. So, oh, okay, it's going to ask me for it. So you just click on OK. Now we're just going to, I'm going to cheat here and give you my log on to my computer, which is fantastic. Okay, so there's my username. And I've already keyed it in. As you see, I did this before when I was connected before. And obviously I've turned the unit on and off a few times. So I'll just key it in again. Okay. Okay, and save for my shortcuts. That's so you can put in a shortcut so you don't have to browse all the way through the network to get to it. But we're just gonna do okay. Okay, so log on successful. So there's the shares on my computer. I created a share called blah. So we'll jump in there. Now you'll see there's the the sample files that I prepared just to copy across to the to the device. Um, so obviously you can go in there and you know, open up any files, whether that they be music, videos, or photos off of your um, share folder on your computer. So that's all that's involved there. That's all pretty straightforward. Okay, so we're gonna jump back again. Now we'll go to the home screen. Now, so one of the cool things about the remote control is you can go back a level or go home or go to the setup menu. So you don't have to keep jumping backwards through levels of menus. You just hit the menu that you want. It'll take you either uh, just back one step if you just want to go back one step or home to take you back to this menu or you press the setup button it'll take you straight into the, the setup menu now what you will see is I've dropped some uh, I've dropped a movie into the movie folder so if we go into movies um, what we will see is the video I've dropped in okay so that's very good <coughs> okay so I've put the sample music from Windows on the device as well so there, you see it there. Now what I've also done is I've dropped some sample photos in there as well. And there you go, you can see you know, my fishing, beautiful fishing picture there and the window sample images. So what I've done is I connected to this device over the network and dropped these files straight into the folder. And then obviously they become you know, usable on the device. So what we'll do now is I'll show you how to copy files to it from a workstation, um, but just while we're here, I may as well show you um, the files manager. That's another one. That's where um, you know we're just in there before. You can go in via the network, uh, universal plug and play if you have a universal plug and play device, um, or an NFS share. It depends if you've got an Apple computer or a Unix computer, that can be handy for getting into those devices as well. Okay, and you've also got your hard drive too, so you can go straight into the hard drive. So if you want to copy something in that doesn't appear in your images folder, your movies or your music folder, you can pop them in there, then access them through there. No real reason why you'd want to do that unless you didn't want it showing in the main menu, but yeah, that's, that's one way you can do that. So we're just going to jump back again. Now the other thing we can do, we, I won't show the, the jukebox of the torrents because jukebox is obviously where you can create a HTML playlist. Of music so you can you know prepare a playlist so if you're having a party or something like that you can you know line up a playlist and just run that you know as the night goes on um, so obviously we don't have time to do that now that's something that you know you can just work through you know once you get your own device uh, torrents is pretty much the same thing um, I think we can set that aside that's something that we don't need to go into a huge amount of detail um, about that's more something that you know people will do if they're familiar with using torrents and things like that already uh, the internet media, this is um, one we will have a look at. Now, obviously we've got a lot of different ones. The really cool thing is there's quite a lot of gaming content here as well. As you can see, you've got Shoutcast Radio as well. Um, and obviously we've got YouTube. We'll jump into YouTube. Um, there's Picasso as well for your Google photo albums. You've got Flickr as well. Um, we'll jump in Flickr and you can see that. I mean, go into your Facebook as well. Um, and here you go, it's just loaded up some sample Flickr images, but if you hit your OK button, it'll 
network disconnected. Oh, okay. Um, all right, so yeah, so I'll show you pictures there. But what you can do as well is if you hit your up arrow, um, up in the top right hand screen there, I'll move the menu so you see it moving up in the top right hand corner. Um, you can flip between pages, but also search photos. So you can search for photos based on the keywords. So if you're looking for something in particular, obviously you can search for it. So that's Flickr. So you can browse Flickr galleries. Um, uh, you can jump into YouTube as well. We'll show you YouTube. I don't think it's a great need to show every single part. Um, but we'll go down and we'll search your video. Obviously, you can sign into your own account as well. Um, I've got a search already done over here. Uh, we'll go to Box Eminor. Obviously, that's my team, so I'm going to go there, obviously. Okay, so um, yeah, now in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see the AC Ryan logo. It has a little bar, and that shows you it's loading. It shows you a little spinning circle to show you that it's actually going to fetch the content. Um, now, okay, this one I'll do. This is the highlights video that Total Eclipse uh, made for us. Now, because this is YouTube, um, we're going to pause it there. So, what we're going to do is pause it because uh, the internet's not so great at the office here. Now, it's not going to do some miracle, amazing, fantastic thing where it's not going to buffer. Because if your computer buffers loading YouTube videos, this device is going to buffer. It doesn't do anything magical that stops it from buffering. That's just your internet connection. So we're going to pause it for a second. <coughs> um, and we're going to switch it to full screen. So we can see the video in full screen. Um, so that's been buffering for a second now. So we'll just kick it in. As you can see, this video is made for us by Nexius. And there you go. So it's full HD. So if you've got um, 1080p videos on YouTube, you can watch them in full quality on the device as well. Okay, so that's... See there. So that's a YouTube video. Um, you can also, um, you know, it shows you... Pause that. Um, it shows you related videos, so it'll keep running through the suggested videos that comes next. So it's really kind of cool like that, because if you hit on a video that you like and you watch it, it'll usually start rotating through similar videos, so you can quite often sit there for an hour or so, um, which is what I did when I first got this device. First thing I did is I plugged it in, fired up YouTube, and I sat there for about an hour just watching all the suggested videos that kept popping up for me. Now, obviously you can go back to the last video, just through the menu. So on the left there, you've got um, related videos, which is you know what it's doing now, cycling through related videos. You can go back to the video just watched and change it to full screen. And it also, one of the cool things it does, it shows you the rating of the video on the right hand side. Um, you'll see a little star system there. It, it grabs some pretty cool little information from YouTube and brings it up on the display as well, including a copyright infringement, which that video that I'm showing there now, obviously it's got music from a, you know, a licensed soundtrack. So we go back, that's YouTube, it does Flickr as well. You can log into your Facebook. Um, obviously, you know, because you don't have a keyboard, you're working off remote control, typing in anything is not gonna be that practical. But, you know, if, if you wanted to show some friends or something, a Facebook photo gallery you've got up on Facebook, or a Facebook is where you store your photo galleries, um, it's an easy way to do it. You can just bring it up um, via the device here and, you know, and show your friends your Facebook photo galleries. Um, so yeah, so that's the internet media you can do. It's really quite handy. And um, one of the things I think would be really, really cool that if the device could do, and I think it's something that may be available in the future devices, is plug in a keyboard. They've given us the ability to use it to watch our movies, um, play our music, look at our photo galleries. Um, it'd be a great development to see where you can plug in even a wireless keyboard would be a great one. So you can plug in a wireless keyboard and actually sit there and surf the net on it as well. So you can plug it into your TV and use your net on the TV. It saves you having a media center PC um, actually at your, you know, over where your TV is. And that'd be a great future development, I think, if we can get something like that going. But yeah, so that, that's the basic features of the device. It's, um, it's really quite good. It takes a lot of different video um, formats as well. I copied across X feeds. MP4s, movie files, so all, all different types of um, video files, and all, it played them all without any issue at all. Uh, the menu's nice and easy to navigate, so obviously, you know, it only gives you your base level menus. So you've got your file manager, your music, your photos, your videos, your internet media, your jukebox, your torrents, and your setup. So it's really quite easy to use. 
Now, so what we'll do is I've given you, you know, that's really as basic as these devices are. Um, so I've given you the rundown on that. Now, I think the next thing we'll do is we'll just jump across to the workstation. I'll just show you how easy it is to find and connect to um, your device over the network. Now, just remember that we went into the network setup. We'll go in there again just to show you. So we went into the network setup. Now, if you want to actually do this, it's really important that you actually um, set this option on. So we'll go down to the network setup, just as a bit of a refresher here. Now, the option we want is Samba. So we want to turn Samba on. Now, um, when you turn Samba on, whether it be 10 minutes, whether it be 15 minutes, it doesn't matter. Just turn it on when you first set up your device. And by the time you've got everything set up, it'll start showing up on your computer because um, like all things with Windows networking, it takes time. When you first enable networking on a device, it'll take a while before it shows up on your Windows computer. You can reboot to speed up the process where it'll go off and search again. But yeah, don't be surprised if it doesn't show up straight away, but it will show up. It just takes a while to, um, you know, for your workstation to discover the device. So that's the key bit to remember, have Samba turned on. And obviously, you know, keep, keep note of your host name too, so you know what you're searching for on the computer. We're almost there. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just do another cutscene now. Um, we'll jump on the computer. I'll show you how to connect to the device, how to copy files onto the device, and that'll be it. And then obviously, hope, well, hopefully, uh, firmware update's done and we can do the firmware upgrade just to close out the demo. So we'll be back shortly. Okay, so we're back again. We're over at my computer now. Now this is the computer that we just browsed a moment ago to, you know, we'll even show you the little blah folder we put on the workstation here, which had our sample images. Um, you can see them there. Obviously the beauty of a HD camera is you're watching this flicker free, which is a real relief when I'm trying to show you something. Now, okay, so we're gonna go into my computer. Now this is Windows XP, process is different for Windows 7. Um, so I can probably show you that too. I might switch to the other screen and I'll, um, I'll show you how to do it on Windows 7 as well. Now, so we've gone to, to my computer. Now we go to my network places. Now we go entire network down the left hand side. You'll see the mouse zinging around. We'll show you just about where it is. So you go to entire network, Microsoft Windows network. Now one of the things you can actually do, which will, um, might make it a bit easier. It's usually around about here. Uh, mine's connected to a domain, so it's a little bit different. So I'm kind of going the long way around because there's no short way around when you're connected to a domain. But you usually see something saying um, view workgroup computers, and that'll show you know all the computers in the workgroup, which in 99% of the cases will show um, your device unless you've changed your workgroup name. So I'm going to go into workgroup. Now, being that this is Windows, it's never insanely fast but it'll do now what you'll see is you'll see samba 3.023c which is the firmware revision of the device and it'll have in brackets play on hd so there's our little ac ryan box um, on the network so we double click on it and there you go there's hard disk drive one so we go in there as you'll see, we've got an image folder, a music folder, and a movie folder. So if you want to put files on the unit, it's as simple as copy and paste. Just grab them off your computer, copy them, and paste them onto the device, and you're done. That's it. That's really that simple. It's that easy to get files you know, back and forth from that device. So what I might do now is we'll jump across to a Windows 7 machine. I'll just give you a bit of a lift and a transfer here. Now I'm going to have to actually hold it for this one, so it's going to be fun to try and keep it nice and stable. So here's our Windows 7 workstation. So we're going to go into computer. Now we're going to select network. Now what it's going to do is um, it's basically going to go off and scan the network for devices and here we go, it's found a heap of them here. Now here's play on HD, nice and easy, the very first option. So we go in there, hard disk drive one and that's it. There we go, there's our image, movie, and music folders. Same thing, just copy and paste the files in there. So it's really that simple. So that's all you have to do to get your files onto your Play On HD device. Like I said, the other way is plug in the USB cable and use it like a memory stick or a USB hard drive, and that'll work fine too. So we'll do the cutscene. Um, the last stage will be the firmware upgrade, and then once that's done, you know, that's it. We've, we've given you a bit of a demo. So we'll be back shortly. Okay, and we're back. Now, the last stage of the review here is the firmware upgrade. 
Um, now, what you want to do is go to the AC Ryan website, or you can just go to um, playonhd.com, which will get you there as well. Now, you go to support, now select uh, the model of your device. Ours is the Play on HD 2. Now, I'll show you a list of firmware upgrades. Obviously, download the latest one. Now, the download will come as a zip file. Now, what you need to do is download the file, uh, then open the zip file, and then copy the little install.img, which is an image file, and copy that out of the zip file onto a USB stick. Now, once you've copied it onto the USB stick, bring the USB stick in and plug it into the side of your device, which you'll see on the screen there. I've got my USB stick plugged in. Now what we want to do is we want to go down to the setup menu at the bottom. Now what we'll do is we use our, our chapter forward button to jump down to miscellaneous. Now as you can see the third option is USB upgrade so we just hit OK on that. Now that'll go off and detect your USB stick that's plugged in. It'll take a minute to do it because it's obviously going to negotiate the stick and um, obviously you know, scan it for files. So that's what it'll do. It'll sit there, it'll scan for the files, and then what it'll come up with is a prompt saying, okay, this is the version, as you can see here, uh, this is the version you've got, this is the new revision, do you want to upgrade, okay, or cancel? So we're gonna click okay. And now what's gonna happen is your device, it'll go into um, firmware upgrade install mode, so where it'll download the image off the stick onto your device, it'll apply the upgrade and then what you'll have is the device will reboot uh, with the new firmware upgrade on it. Now, this might take a while to do, so I don't think there's any huge need for us to sit here and, um, and just watch that. Just obviously make sure you do not turn off your device while this is in progress. Uh, do not run it while there's a lightning storm. I think that's pretty obvious um, if there's any, any kind of weather conditions or anything like that which um, may cause the power you know to fail the power to go out on the device don't do it at a time like that always do it you know when you know you can reasonably expect nothing to go wrong where the power would go out and as you can see on the screen there it's just installing the latest firmware upgrade it's showing you your status bar and once that's complete the device will reboot and off you go again um, so that's it that's our AC Ryan play on HD2 device um, thanks to AC Ryan for sending that down to us and obviously Blue Chip IT, the Australian distributors. Um, nice easy device to use, it's a lot of fun, uh, it's easy to copy files back and forth from. And it's a really handy device to have because you can sit there in the lounge room watching YouTube videos instead of, you know, cooped up behind the desk watching them on the computer. Um, it's a really handy device to have and I hope you enjoy it as much as I have and thanks for watching the review.